Research and discovery. Futurists. Jesse is three years old and suffers from severe malaria. He's lucky, though. His mother walked two hours to take him to the Albert Schweitzer Hospital in Gabon, Central Africa. Pediatricians treated him quickly. His health is improving. But severe malaria kills one child every minute in sub-Saharan Africa, according to the World Health Organization. He has a fever and is unable to eat. He started being sick this morning. He vomited twice. As many as 500 million people become infected with malaria every year. Children under five are especially vulnerable. Their bodies have yet to develop partial immunity against the disease. If malaria has taken hold, where children are concerned, the sufferer falls into a coma after a long phase of vomiting. In other words, they're seriously ill. We can no longer communicate with them, and most importantly, they cannot ingest medication in syrup form or pills. This means that medicine can only be administered intravenously. In this hospital, up to 30% of the children admitted in emergencies will be diagnosed with malaria. The transmission chain of the parasite responsible for the illness is well known. People get malaria usually after being bitten by an infective female mosquito, carriers of parasites. And when they bite children, the parasites are transmitted through the bite. The parasites will then circulate in the blood. They go to the liver, where they reproduce according to a complex cycle. They then destroy the cells of the liver and are again released into the blood in very high numbers and cause symptoms such as fever. They then destroy red blood cells, causing anemia and various other negative effects. I just learned all this while visiting the doctor. From what he's told me, we should always be protected with a net. It's mainly from five o'clock in the afternoon that mosquitoes begin to bite. Severe malaria is routinely treated in Africa with quinine. But after his mother's consent, Jesse is receiving an alternative treatment with intravenous artesanate, an artemisinin derivative. In an Afro-European research project, scientists are trying to find out if this derivative is more efficient than quinine. Jesse's blood is analysed four times a day. Experts in tropical diseases then estimate how efficient the treatment is by calculating the dwindling density of parasites in the blood. First, we want to see how we can simplify the administration of the drug. Currently, the administration is quite complex. We want to be able to treat a child in three days with a single dose of medication per day. Secondly, we want to make a comparison with quinine to check how much more effective artesanate is than quinine in the treatment of severe malaria. We take a blood sample every six hours. With this, we want to first see how the product works in the blood of the sick children, check there are no adverse side effects, for example. And then we try to assess whether the product is really in the process of cleaning the blood parasite infecting the patient. Data from these clinical trials are then further studied some 6,000 kilometers from Gabon. In Germany, we meet again with Peter Kremsner. We are now in the Institute for Tropical Diseases in Tübingen. 
Biologists here unveil the genetic secrets of malaria parasites with the goal of determining their vulnerability when attacked by different drugs or by the same drug in different doses. Preliminary conclusions look promising in the case of intravenous artesanate. The results are still in the preliminary stage, but studies are beginning to show that we have found an easier and more efficient way to administer artesanate in child patients. A single dose daily for three days eliminates parasites fairly conclusively. So we believe we will be able to simplify treatment for sick children. A far more simple remedy is possible, but scientists want to know if it is also efficient. That is why, back to Gabon, researchers get ready for a field trip. They travel to Kermi, some 16 kilometers from the Schweitzer Hospital. The monitoring of sick children is important after their hospitalization because it's necessary to confirm the fever has not come back. We must also be able to verify if there's a recurrence of the parasite. We are trying, in fact, to check if the child is doing well and recovering since his release from the hospital. Around 80% of the children in this village will suffer the disease before they turn five years old. Researchers are here to meet Rolf. He is five years old and was treated with intravenous artesanate a month ago. Scientists want to know if he has fully recovered. Isabel, his mother, has four children. Three of them have been treated for severe malaria. The eldest boy was sick the first time when he was one year old and was ill several times until the age of five. After that, he no longer fell ill. Rolf had his first case of malaria at the age of three, but at the age of five, he had to be hospitalized again. Clinical examinations confirm that Rolf is on the road to recovery. Preliminary results are indeed convincing researchers that the treatment is not only more simple, but is also more efficient than using quinine. The artesanate has fewer side effects, to our knowledge, and works faster than quinine. Scientists hope their research will prove useful to treat severe malaria cases in small children. But they emphasize that prevention in areas of high risk is still a key issue. There is a risk the reduction of malaria in the population also decreases vigilance against this disease. It's important that we carry out preventative measures. We must persist and continue to distribute mosquito nets and ensure their proper installation and provide treatment as quickly as possible. Our research fits into this framework. We want to help prevent and at the same time improve existing treatments for the most serious cases of malaria. Thus, we hope to avoid the death of many children.